All right, in this next part, what we're going to be doing is going on with uh, getting our, our scene ready to draw with. Now, I did create a top view for mine as well, so I could see what the top view would look like with the floor plan on and off. And that's actually going to be a nice thing for us to go to, because I'm going to be using this top view quite a lot when I am drawing. Now, another thing that we can also do is you'll notice we're in 3D perspective we can actually get a parallel projection and this will make it so that we're really just seeing things straight on. Now one of the problems that we have though um, I should point out is that it'd be really nice for me to be able to see when I'm drawing on top of this but I have lines that are really really dark right now so here's a trick that I think is kinda cool I'm gonna actually bring up my paint bucket tool I'm gonna actually go back to this object though I forgot to do that first I'm gonna right click on it and choose use as material now you'll see that material there and I can paint that material on that object go to edit and change the opacity down. Now you're not going to actually see it applied until we do one last step which is actually to break apart. So I'm going to right click on it or, and choose explode or break it apart. There you go. Now we can see that material and how it's applied. And that's going to be really helpful for when we're drawing to make sure that we can see our, our floor plan in the background but it's not too much in our way. Anyway, let's go back to the top view um, let's do parallel projection and zoom up and let's start uh, drawing. Now we're going to be using the regular drawing tools that we're used to and what you want to be aware of is notice when you have these things that are windows we're going to actually go ahead and make sure that we go right out and just get rid of those. We're just going to cut right through those um, because what we really don't want to make sh we want to make sure that we don't have any real mistakes about things. So anyway there's my first wall I'll do my next wall. Might need to zoom in a little bit so I'm not snapping to things too close. There we go. There's another wall right there. So let's see if I can go up a little bit. Up. And that looks like that's where that wall ends, maybe. And it's not actually a bad idea believe it or not, go all the way around your object when you do this and not even be, because we, we can always go in and fix these details after. That looks like a sliding door or something like that. And, and so that's actually something that we should add afterwards. So I should point out that we should fix that, but here's something that you might need to do. You need to make sure that you, you're absolutely accurate. So make sure that you snap to the interferences there um, before you start drawing because if you're not if those two lines are not merged together you'll get some really funky things when you try and um, cut through your objects or something like that so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw different parts of my object here's another place we might want to use the interference just to make sure we get straight across right there now I also want to snap to that one so now I'm snapping all the way across so I'm not even gonna worry about whether or not that gets goes all the way to the edge because I can have that work that way and then if I want I could snap down again let's see where that next one is looks like it's there so I'll go all the way to the edge with that this just takes a little bit of getting used to to draw these things the way you want them. And you don't have to worry about things being absolutely perfect, but you know, the better the more perfect you make them, the better for sure. Now notice this. This is a bedroom. So um, that closet looks like I'm going to go all the way across. And the reason I'm going to go all the way across is because that closet door is going to have a header above it, which will actually be this particular wall. So I'm going to deal with that later, about actually fixing that later. What we could do if we wanted is to create some sort of little shape inside here that would say that's where it's going to be cut. Um, just something to be aware of um, for later. It's, it's, it's really not a bad idea for us to have that there. Here's where I've got an issue. Notice that I did not cut that accurately. So here's where you have to be very careful about cutting things because if these things are not perfect, they're going to be wrong. 
So I'm going to come back in here again. It's really hard. Let me go back to my top view, maybe. So that's snapping there. Now, now that I've got a little bit more of this drawn, I've got a lot more of it drawn. I'm not really going to worry about whether or not I get everything done. But what we need to do is get rid of all these little points. So we're going to get rid of all the lines so that we know that we have an object in the side, inside, which is what we want. Whoops, I clicked on the wrong tool there. So we have to get rid of all the little lines. If we don't have the if we don't have this thing connected as one single object, it's not going to extrude up the way we want. Here I'm going to zoom in and make sure that I get just the right things that I want. Get rid of. There we go. Looks pretty good. Oops. Accidentally deleted a line I didn't want to delete. And that's where I'm going to not worry about that other part for right now. Anyway, you would do this for your entire object and make sure that you get around the entire thing before we go ahead and do um, the extrusion. When you're ready, let's go ahead and extrude the object that we need as our fill, as our walls. Now, if yours is not working, it means that you've got some places that are not cut properly or not joined properly. And it's going to take you a little bit of time just to figure out where that is sometimes. But the goal is to have it all working perfectly. Now, this particular object would be nice if I kind of um, filled it with, uh, you know, something that is uh, a better color. So I'm going to choose maybe a light beige or something just to, whoops, the beige, and I'm going to do contiguous, so, whoops, looks like it, it messed that up, so I'll just refill my background with the uh, material, and you'll see that now I've got my object there with the beige, and um, I've got my floor plan in the other places. So cool, that's what we're trying to get to, and then we can turn off our floor plan and just see what our models look like. Now it looks like in this particular um, floor plan, it's actually for some reason applying the materials to that particular layer. I'm not exactly sure why. So I'm going to select that and not that. It's probably because it's touching. And when it's touching, it's it, I probably didn't do the smart thing, which would have been to group this by itself. If I had grouped this by itself, then this uh, model would not be intersecting with it, and that would have been really, really smart. So I'm going to take the entity info, make sure that I've moved that up to layer one, or layer zero, I'm sorry, so it's not on the same layer as the floor plan. And now that is fixed. That is exactly what we want. So it does take a little bit of thinking ahead of time, and I don't always think ahead of time when I'm making these things, but that's also good to show you because that's the type of problem that we might encounter. I just didn't make a group out of my um, background layer because I exploded it so I could apply the material, and then it, that meant it was intersecting with my object, which is kind of a problem. Anyway, now you'll see that we have our basic model done. We're ready to go on to the next part, so save your work and go on.